by www.15rounds.com, the worldwide leader in boxing news. Also, Abrams Boxing PR Media Broadcast, the industry standard for boxing media relations and play-by-play broadcasting. Also, check out www.abramsboxing.com, Abrams Boxing on YouTube, as well as M. Abrams Boxing on Twitter and Mark Abrams Boxing on Instagram. Hey, boxing fans, another edition of the Abrams Boxing Show. I am Mark Abrams, and we have a big show for you this week. I'll be joined by the former heavyweight world title challenger, Fast Eddie Chambers, as he makes his comeback on Tuesday night live on Fight.tv from Nashville, Tennessee. We'll get into all the particulars of that fight with Fast Eddie Chambers. And, uh, well, let's get right to it. It's a lot of week, a uh, big week of news, big week of results, some previews this week. We'll be live this Saturday night at the uh, big fight with Amanda Serrano and Erica Cruz. We'll get into that in a minute. So, uh, all the stuff that we'll be doing there. So let's get back to last week. WBC, WBO, and IBF light heavyweight champ of the world, Arthur Betterbeev, went to 19-0, scored his 19th knockout as he took out Anthony Yard in a very entertaining back-and-forth scrap in London uh, this past Saturday. Fight was seen live on ESPN Plus here in the United States. It was a really good fight. I mean, Anthony Yard fought a heck of a fight. He... uh Back better be a, a, a few times during the fight. Better be a much like his fight against Marcus Brown. Started a little slow, got cut. Yard was cut. Came back to uh, really uh, take the fight. You know, gain control of the fight in round seven, <clears throat> and in round eight, uh, put the finishing touches, dropping Yard, and then finishing off with a flurry. The corner of Yard stopped the bout. Yard now twenty three and three, twenty two knockouts. A lot of fans are calling now for. Full unification, full undisputed with better be against uh, Dimitri Bebel. I don't know if that's going to happen next. I think uh, they may work out a deal with WBC mandatory count challenger Callum Smith. Look for that fight to be next for Arthur better be I think uh, Yard in his only two title defenses, he took uh, – Sergey Kovalev to the limit. He pushed Arthur Betterbiev uh, in, in his fight on Saturday. So I expect uh, um, Anthony Orr to get some more high-profile fights uh, in, in the near future. Also on the show, reigning WBA flyweight champion Artem Delakian went to 22 and 0. Made a sixth defense of his titles. He scored a what I thought was a very close, contra- you know, people calling it controversial decision over David Jimenez. Jimenez now twelve and one. Scores were one sixteen, uh, excuse me, one fifteen, one thirteen twice for Delakian and one sixteen, one twelve for the reigning WBA flyweight champion. Um, Delakian is a little bit old. I believe he's like thirty five, which is about fifty three in flyweight years. Uh, he's primed to uh, probably get in, unseated in his next uh, half decent tough defense. Saturday night, the zone uh, at, at the YouTube Theater in Inglewood, California, uh, right next to I thought maybe even inside the beautiful SoFi Stadium. Alexis Rocha went to twenty-two and one. He notched his fourteenth knockout as he stopped. As he stopped a late replacement George Ashy. Ashy now thirty-three six and one. Uh, it was a very, again, a very entertaining fight. Ash, you stepped in as a late replacement for Anthony Juice Young, who uh, hurt his nose uh, about a week or so before the fight. Arocha, who um, ranked at number three by the WBO now, and with uh, the two guys ahead of him, that being Jerron Ennis and Amante Stanionis uh, going other directions. Ennis now the IBF interim champion, uh, is Stan, not Stanionis, uh, Virgil Ortiz, who's me fucking. Montes Stanionis, and we'll get to that date. I think we have a remake date of that fight. Uh, we'll be talking about that in the future. Alexis Rocha could be number one for Terrence Crawford, who, uh, whether it's coincidence, ironic, he was seen talking with Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins earlier last week. They tweeted out a photo. Could Terrence Crawford be coming to Golden Boy where he would, you know, be able to make some fights with, again, the aforementioned Alexis Rocha, maybe Virgil Ortiz, should he win his WBA title. So it uh, should be interesting opportunities for Terrence Crawford uh, on the heels of the fight with Errol Spence Jr. looking like it's uh, not going to happen anytime soon. Um, also on the card, WBO minimum weight 
uh, number two contender Oscar Colazzo knocked out number three ranked Udell Reyes. Colazzo knows six and zero with four knockouts. Uh, he will now be instituted as the mandatory for uh, Melvin Jerusalem. And I think we got some more news on that later in the show as well. Also on the card, Beck Tamir, Beck the Bully, Malakuziev scored a uh, third round stoppage over Ulysses Serrera. And also uh, unbeating, unbeaten at WBA number 10 ranked lightweight in the world, up and coming fighter Floyd Schofield went to 13 0, notch his 10th knockout. He took out our Alberto Mercado, who's now 17 5 1. That was in the. Um, Actually, no, he didn't take him out. It was a 10 uh, round unanimous decision. Scores were 100 to 89 on all cards for Floyd Schofield. Um, Saturday, uh, excuse me, Friday night, Sergei Bohacek went to 22 and 1 with uh, his 22nd knockout. Scored a uh, six round stoppage over uh, perennial contender Nathaniel Gallimore. The Gallimore 22 7 and 1. Uh, that was a stoppage, um, stoppage victory. Uh, uh, in round number six, and I read somewhere that Gallimore may have retired after the fight. Guy always always, always in good fights uh, was uh, Nate Gallimore. Uh, Saturday night in New Hampshire, WBO number three, WBC number nine, and IBF number 12 ha- heavyweight Otto Volin scored an eight round unanimous decision over Helamon O'Gwin. Volin now 25 and one, the one loss being the hard fought decision to Tyson Fury. O'Gwin now nine, five and one. Scores are 79, 73, and 80, 72 on both cards for the big Swede, Otto Valin, now uh, making it, uh, you know, out in New York now, being trained by Joey Gamash. Also, last uh, Wednesday night, undefeated uh, or un- underdog, Jesus Saracho scored a um, an upset victory over WBO number eight uh, contender, uh, Caesar Francis in a super lightweight belt. Francis now 12 and 1, seven knockout scores are 96, 94 twice, and 98, 92 for Sriracha, who won the WBO Latino title and uh, definitely will be get a nice world ranking in the 140 pound division. Some action this week uh, to go over. ESPN Plus uh, on Thursday night will have a nice show that will feature. WBA number two, WBO number three, WBC number four, and IBF number 10. Eric Bazinian, 28 no, 21 knockouts against Alantes Fox, 28 3 and 1, 13 knockouts. That will be for the NABF and NABA Super Middleweight Championships. Also, the co feature will uh, pit WBC number 14 contender Eve Gilles Jr. Saw him fight a couple times on HBO a couple years back. 22 and 2, 13, uh, with 12 knockouts. He'll face Gabriel Golez Valenzuela, 25, 3 and 1, with 15 knockouts. Friday night, ESPN Plus has a real nice card uh, that will feature the WBO um, Junior Lightweight Championship as the reigning and, un- and, uh, uh, featherweight champion Emmanuel Navarrete, 36 and 1, 30 knockouts. Uh, becomes, uh, he's looking to become a three division world champion as he takes on WBO number three ranked contender Liam Wilson, 11 and 1. Uh, Wilson out of Australia. Wilson stepping in for Oscar Valdez, who had to bow out of the fight. That fight will be uh, take place, like I said, ESPN Plus uh, from the Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale, California. Good, good co-feature, Bell. Unbeaten junior welterweight fight at Arnold Barbosa, 27 and 0, 10 knockouts. He'll take on uh, uh, Jose, former world champion in a couple of weight classes. Jose Pedraza, 29, 4 and 1, 14 knockouts. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting co-feature. ESPN Plus uh, Friday night. Uh, so check your local listings. It might, it might start around six something east, about six o'clock Eastern time. Saturday night it will be a uh, be a night for the ladies uh, playing on Broadway as a uh, couple world championship fights a couple a couple undisputed world championship fights as Amanda Serrano 43 2 and 1 30 knockouts she will meet Erica Cruz 15 and 1 3 knockouts for the undisputed featherweight title and Alicia Baumgartner 13 and 1 7 knockouts fresh off her big win over Michaela Mayer will take on Elham Makaled 15 and 1 3 knockouts for the undisputed super featherweight title that fight will be 
Uh, those two fights will headline live on the zone at the Hulu Theater, Madison Square Garden. Um, I know there's uh, some good fights. Ram Ali taking on uh, Avril Matthews on the card. Sky Nicholson's on the card. A good men's belt between Richardson Hitchens and John Balza. So it'll be a big night of boxing. I'll be ringside to chronicle all the action for 15rounds.com. Maybe we'll maybe do some uh, live uh, live footage before the fights start on Saturday. Saturday night, we'll also um, have wall-to-wall co- uh, coverage as uh, we'll be uh, present at the press conference and weigh-in, get some exclusive interviews. Just uh, tune to Abrams Boxing on YouTube and 15rounds.com for all your latest boxing news, um, especially surrounding this great fight card Saturday night live on The Zone from the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. A lot of news items to get to this week. Former female uh, champion, uh, featherweight champion Heather Hardy uh, will be back in action. She takes on Tiana Cordoso. That fight will be uh, t- Thursday, February 23rd at the Sony Theater in Manhattan. Uh, triple header announced for March the, um, let's see here, March the, I think it's March the 11th. Let me see here. Um, Brandon Figueroa, 22-1-1, takes on Mark Maxi in a battle of former world champions. That will be for the vacant WBC interim featherweight title. The telecast will also uh, include uh, uh, young middleweight fighters. I'm a, I'm Alcar Vidal, 16-0, 12 knockouts, taking on Elijah Garcia, 13-0, and 11 knockouts. And the co-feature that night on March 4th will be Jarrett Hurd, 24 and 2, 16 knockouts, taking on Armando Resendez, 13 and 1 knockout, uh, nine knockouts, live on Showtime triple header from the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California. WBA welterweight champion Amante Stanionis will take on Virgil Ortiz. The, I think the working date for that is going to be April 29th, live on the zone. Middleweight uh, Chris Eubank Jr. has a rematch clause uh, for an immediate return bout for Liam uh, Smith. The, Eubank, uh, who was knocked out in, in the uh, fourth round against Smith a couple weeks back. Uh, they have a couple weeks to figure out what they want to do, so stay tuned for that. Heavyweights Brian Howard, 15-5, 12 knockouts, takes on Junior Wright, 19-4-1, 16 knockouts. I'll be calling the action uh, part of the broadcast team on March the 4th in Newtown, Pennsylvania. Be live on BXNGTV, doc, uh, BXNGTV.com. Matchroom Boxing returns to Mexico on March 4th as they have a f- main event. will feature number five rated Angel Fierro and take on Eduardo Estela in, uh, for the WBO NABO Lightweight Championship. Um, after uh, being uh, contracted with COVID, John Pascal, his fight with Michael a- Afert for the uh, – Elimination belt, the IBF elimination light heavyweight belt will now take place March 16th at Palace Bell in Laval, Canada, the hometown of John Pascal. BLK Prime announced that former four-time world champion uh, Adrian Broner will take on Michael Williams. That will uh, be on a 39-99 pay-per-view clash on February 25th at the Gateway Center in Atlanta. Uh, Also, Hank uh, he replaced Hank Lundy, who replaced Ivan Redcash. Uh, Most Valuable Promotions announced that Jake Paul will take on uh, Tommy Fury finally in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia on February the 26th. Uh, it, that will be live on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Also, Alinga Makabu will take on who will take on Badu Jack for the WBC uh, Cruiserweight Championship. The WBC has sanctioned the April 1 clash for two-time Olympic gold medalist Robesi Ramirez and Isaac uh, Dog Bay for the interim featherweight title. That'll be an ESPN, ESPN Plus show on April 1st, my birthday, at the Hard Rock Hotel and, and Casino in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Then officially announced uh, late last week that David Benavides takes on Caleb Plant live on Showtime pay-per-view from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas on Saturday, March 25th. Um, they, good rumored undercard. Uh, I know one of the rumors I was making the rounds yesterday would be Joey Spencer taking on Jesus Ramos, and I saw something maybe Jose Valenzuela maybe taking on Chris Colbert. So it looks like it could, could be a heck of a card. I, I also saw something where Cody Crowley may face Abel Ramos. So it'll be a good action-packed undercard on March 25th if those are the uh, the rumored fights are uh, you know come to fruition. So uh, let's see here. What, what did we miss here? 
And this now, we just actually have one more thing. Uh, Luis Neri will take on Azad Hovination. That's going to be a hell of a fight. It's going to be a real under-the-radar fight. That will take place February 18th at the Fox Theater in Pomona, California. Be live on the zone. So I'm um, a fight that, that I'm really looking forward to. Earlier this uh, week, I had a chance to talk to returning heavyweight Eddie Chambers, Chambers who fought Vladimir Klitschko for the uh, heavyweight championship of the world a few years back, is uh, coming back after six years, and he will be making his return on Tuesday, November, uh, Tuesday, February the 7th in Nashville, t- Tennessee, live on Fight.tv. And uh, if hopefully some of you fans can order the pay-per-view event, you may uh, know who the guy calling the play-by-play is. So, like I said, I had a chance to talk to Eddie Chambers, and this is how it went. Now join me on the line is a, a man who's making his return to the ring after a six-year absence, the former world heavyweight title challenger, Fast Eddie Chambers, who gets back in the ring on Tuesday night, February 7th in Nashville, Tennessee. Eddie uh, driving. Eddie, what's happening? Oh, man, uh, not too much, <laughs> as you can tell. No, but uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm kind of – in between things, uh, trying to figure it out, trying to see what happens, um, giving myself an opportunity to get back in there. Uh, I've seen a lot of – not a lot, but I've seen a few guys who are up in age try to get in, try to do some things. Uh, I've seen some guys with some success, some guys with who, who, who are not. I've been, um, you know, taking care of myself the best way I possibly could. I still feel the same, you know, besides some extra soreness when I come back from the gym, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a little different than what I'm used to when I was, you know, obviously when I was younger than when they fight. Um, other than that, I feel good. I feel, I feel like ready to do this, ready to go back at it again, see how, I, you know, see how I fare, see how far I can get, you know, in, in, in these next well, few fights. I'm not looking past the one I have won Tuesday, this, but, you know. <laughs> has this been something that you've been thinking about doing for, I know you've been out of the ring for about six years now. Is I mean, w- when did you realize that this is a, a possibility for you to restart your career? Honestly, I, I never, it was never off the table. Uh, it was just more of a like, uh, you know, I would be sparring here, working with guys. And I'm talking about like, I'm not talking about just sparring anybody. I, spar, I would spar guys that were in like the top 10. You know, like top five guys there, you know, not, I was like top five, I was like top ten uh, guys. And I was still doing well with them. And we're talking about no real training. Like, obviously, I was working out all the time and, and, and playing ball, but I wasn't doing a lot of boxing. So I was still feeling good. I still moved well, you know, still move was moving well and everything. So, I mean, we always toyed with the idea, you know, I mean, my, and my guy, and we've been, we've been you, know, you know, knowing each other since about 2013. He's a good, he's been a, you know, he's a real, you know, he's one of the top trainers now. He, you know, he used to be a good, great pad guy. Now he turned into a really, really top level trainer. And uh, we, were, we had talked about it many times. He's like, yo, man, if you're going to do it, you need to do it now and stop waiting. You know, shit up, you shit or get off the pot type of thing. Yeah, excuse my language. But I was sitting there like, uh, ah, you know, I'm not sure, you know, kind of hesitant because of, you know, the business aspect of boxing is, isn't the most inviting when you're, you know, when you're, when you're going into it. So, you know, I have a lot of bad memories from that, but the sports out of it, not, you know, having that sour taste in my mouth from losing my last fight gave me kind of the, you know, the motivation to want to come back and do it at least for, you know, to see what I feel like and what I would be like uh, at this new age that I am 40 years old uh, and see, you know, if I can do something with it again. I mean, I just, I'm not sure. And like I said, it took a while for me to decide to it. I know why. I know most people go like, why the hell would you wait from 34 to 40 to decide to to now make the comeback? And honestly, if I could answer that, I would. (laughs) But I really don't know why it took so long. I think it was just trying to find the right situation and something that I could work my way through. When I was just like kind of out of it a little bit, like the first year, people were saying, "Oh man, you want to?" Then they wanted to bring me back, fighting guys who were, you know, top top level guys, or at least you know, top twenty, top twenty five guys. Just jump right back in there with them, you know, after a year or two off. And I'm sitting there like, "No, I want to take, 
my time with it a little bit. I want to maybe get a couple easy fights, a couple fights that I can handle. I mean, of course, I can handle hard fights, but I wanted to get a couple fights that was, you know, work me back into the to, to, into the fold. Most people weren't trying to give me that, so that was part of what made me wait a little longer. I didn't want to, uh, you know, I didn't want to just jump right back in. The, the heavyweight divisions changed a little bit since we last saw you. Uh, you know, Dante uh, Deontay Wilder was the heavyweight champion of the world, I believe, when they, when you were last fought. Uh, and we'll talk about the fight with Gerald Washington in, in a minute. Now it's Tyson Fury, another big guy in there. He's going to probably fight Newsick, Some other guys, uh, uh, you know, guys like Herjavic and some other guys who are waiting their turn to fight for the, for the heavyweight championship of the world. I mean, I remember the Eddie Chambers, you know, 28, 29, 30. He, he definitely would, would be uh, would be able to compete with with these guys. I mean, do you feel still at the age of 40 that, that you know, that guys like uh, some of these guys we mentioned who are maybe waiting their opportunity, Dillian White, who just fought for a title, Chisora got a title shot. You feel you feel that, you know, Eddie Chambers in the middle? Could, could compete with those guys right now at, at age 40? Honestly, I don't I don't feel any different, really. I'm going to be honest. Um, you know, when I go in the gym and I hit the bags, and I hit the, don't get me wrong, there's, you know, certain things conditioning-wise and fight shape-wise that obviously I got to correct. But I don't really feel any different. Now, you know, once I get in with real competition and I actually had an opportunity to spar with a real up-and-coming lighter weight guy, who made me realize that it's like time to get serious before I decide to want to jump, you know, in there with somebody with a name or anything like that. But, um, yeah, I, I, I honestly really feel that the skill level is still there, obviously. That's not going anywhere. Um, it's just a matter of getting sharp, you know, getting my legs back under me. I'm, honestly, they never left. I, I, I'm always in the gym. Like, you know, a lot of people, if you know me, you know, I love basketball. So I'm playing basketball constantly, always, always working out. And I'm also training people. So I'm always in the gym, hitting the bag, working out with the people that I train. So even though, it, you know, in those years coming up to this, up to this point now, I think I haven't done anything I have. I've been still working. My weight is still not too far off of what I fought at. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still where I need to be as far as if I wanted to make a comeback and actually compete with some of the, you know, the, the name guys in the division. I think what I have uh, skill-wise and, and there's still, there's still speed. There's still, uh, there's still athleticism and stuff like that that is there. Um, I think I could still be a formidable foe in the heavyweight division, but I'm going to, I'm going to have to see in this first one or two fights, just how I feel before, because I'm not one of those guys who can delusion by any means. I'm going to make sure if I don't feel it, I'm not doing it. Obviously, there are you know a couple of the fights. Uh, you know, obviously, you lost to Klitschko. No shame in in that. I think two fights that stand out in terms of uh, you know towards the end of your career, you tried to move down the cruiserweight, fought the Bizu M Chunu, and uh, you just weren't there that night. I mean, you just you weren't there that night. And to, to a similar degree, the Gerald Washington fights. What 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 happened in those two fights? I mean, it just seemed like uh, I don't know if you you lost the desire or or whatever. For the, you know, in those two fights, but you know, like I said, I've seen most of your career, if not you know, probably from your tenth fight on, I've seen pretty much all, every one of your fights. You weren't there either of those nights. So what went on? So many things outside of the ring for the the Viso Juno fight. Um, there were so many things going on outside the ring, you know, and, and I, and the thing is the interview after the fight, the worst thing in my opinion that a fighter can do is tell, even if those things are true, even if he's had difficulty in the camps and difficulty in general, uh, just with training or outside stuff, the, the worst thing you can do is mention it in the, in the post fight interview because, or even the, or even the, 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 the press conference, anything. Just just take the L and deal with it. But and, and and it's been some years now for that for those particular fights, whether the one uh with the B zone Juno is 
It was see if you can lower the camera weird. a little bit. We see your four. Oh, four sorry. Are you? Okay. Sorry. sorry. Sorry about that. I had it up. <laughs> I have lifted it up. My bad. Um, yeah, it was just so much, so much going on. You know, there was financial issues. There was, you know, trying to get to, to training issues. Uh, you know, it was just, it was just, it was just not what you would think. And, and to be quite honest, it was really just being a bit, too overconfident in where I was, knowing that, oh, I'm fighting guys my size finally. <laughs> so it, 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 that doesn't say that I wasn't training. I was training. I was doing the best I could with, you know, with what I, what I had. And I was still in the gym as much as I could possibly be, but I just wasn't in the gym that was necessary for me. To, you know I mean? I wasn't in Schuler's at the time because that's where I was in the <laughs> gym at the time. And, and, and real quickly, because uh, we only have a couple minutes left, the General Washington fight, did, okay. it, it, almost seemed, it almost seemed like you had a foot outside the door, you know, ready to kind of pack it in that night. Is it, is it basically as simple as that? Honestly, it was, it was. It was It was just, you know, like I said, once again, if you couple those two, those last two that you can remember seeing me in with the, the Juno and the, and the Washington fight, it was just, it was mental. It was all mental. It was a lot of stuff that was, like I said, I couldn't control. Uh, uh, that I wanted to be able to control, but I just it, just it just didn't work out for me in that way. So I had to deal with it. I just had to deal with it, and I said, you know what? And then after the Gerald Washington fight, it gave me the, the, the ammo to say, you know what? I'm, I'm done with this shit. And just to hell with it and step, step to the side. And now I regret it. <laughs> but, but at the same time, uh, I'm trying to do what, what I can to get back in there and, and right that wrong and at least see if at least see if I can still compete at this age. We'll see. I mean, right now we're and, and, and you know, we're you, in the beginning stages. And you'll know after two. I mean, after after these two fights, if you feel that you know what, okay, let me continue this. You feel after the second fight, you know, obviously you, your record. Your name, your accomplishments will probably put you in a situation. You know, you'll probably be brought on on a B side or something like that. You know, but right. it'll give you, it'll get you that opportunity to to prove that you can still compete with some of these guys. Is is, is that is that what it is? Maybe just two fights because at age forty, I mean, not not really too much time to wait. Right, uh, you're hundred percent right, Mark. And I the idea in my mind was let's test the waters. Let's see what we got. You know, these first, these first two, you know, obviously, you know, they're not going to be the toughest guys, but, you know, at least they'll give me some, you know, get somebody in front of me under the lights, see how I feel, get, get past the nerves, you know what I mean? Even though most people are like, man, you got almost 50 fights, you still get nervous, you get damn right. I, I, absolutely. But, um, yeah, it'll give me an opportunity to see what happens and, and, and whether or not I should pursue it at a high level. Well, Eddie, thank you. What do you want to say to the fans in closing before we see you? Tuesday night, February 7th, live on Fight.TV, live from Nashville, the Country Box, the Tuesday night fight series, uh, kicking off uh, their first show. And uh, they have a former world title challenger uh, on the card, Fast Eddie Chambers. What do you want to tell the fans out there? Oh, man, I'm just, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. I know it's better better late than never, you know, for, for my supporters, uh, but – I'm, I'm going to do my best to uh, do you guys proud and, and, and show that you should have been supporting me, hopefully. And, uh, you know, just try to be as successful uh, going forward. And maybe if, you know, down the line, there may be some kind of title available. That would be nice. You know what yeah. I mean? Somebody that's old. Somebody that's old with a title. Wouldn't that be cool? There you <laughs> but now we'll, we'll see. There you go. Fast Eddie Chambers, thank you for a few minutes of time. I look forward to getting down to Nashville, seeing you in action, and, uh, you know, uh, seeing where this journey takes you, Eddie. But do me a favor, before we get to Nashville, drive safely. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate it. I definitely will. We'll talk to you soon. My man, talk to you.